I am Dusty Rains from Amarillo, Texas. And the story I have to tell is about this very building that we are in now. As a matter of fact, the location in which some of the most spooky things happen is not very far from here. As a matter of fact, I was sort of disappointed that the folks who run this building had closed a big steel door that goes from this part of the building into the adjacent part. Because just beyond the steel door that is at the end of this hall, over to the left is another steel door. When I first discovered this big steel plate door, I thought, well, perhaps it belongs to a safe or something. And so I did a little bit more investigation, and the door was not locked, and I opened it up and looked inside, and it's just a stairwell type of a closet, something like a janitor's closet. That piqued my interest. Why in the world would there be a big, heavy steel door on a janitor's closet? So as I got to doing some investigation, I found some folks who had formerly worked in this building. And they did not know this story firsthand, but they did have some stories that they had been told. This building was first built in 1927. It was also during that time, uh, a little bit later, during the Depression years, starting in 1929 and 1930, things were just as difficult in Amarillo as they were all over the nation. Even children were having to work jobs to bring in money to help carry on the household expenses. There was a young fifth grader by the name of Tommy Johnson, who was going to school here at the time. Tommy had a job at the Snow White Bakery, which is located on, I believe it's 4th and Buchanan. 4th Street is 13 blocks from here. Buchanan is what, three blocks over? Now there were no trolley cars in Amarillo at that time. They had shut down in about 1923. There was also no bus service, and Tommy wouldn't have been able to afford it anyway. So he began walking from his home, which was pretty close to Adams Street, clear over to the Snow White Bakery, and he had to be there at 4 a.m. And then he began work. He worked from 4 a.m. to 7.30. And then he had a rush to this building to go to school. Well, it was quite tough for him to stay awake sometimes, especially if class was kind of dull and boring. And there happened to be a very dull and boring teacher at this school, and her name was Miss Thornapple. Now, Miss Thornapple, she was known to be a very strict teacher. She did not like children cutting up. She did not like children going to sleep. And she did not like Tommy Johnson, because that boy had a tough time trying to stay awake in her class. After about three or four times of these incidents, and she had sent him out into the hall, that was the common punishment back then. They didn't put you in your, your nose into a corner in the back of the classroom and put a dunce hat on you. They had a little bit of compassion. The school policy was the child would sat outside the door of the classroom. So he would sit outside the door and get to take a nap and avoid the dullness of Mrs. Crabtree's boring lecture. The fifth time Tommy fell asleep in class, she had had enough of it. She decided that she was going to scare that child and to never sleeping again in her class. So she decided she would lock him up in the janitor's closet where it was nice and dark. And maybe that would scare him enough where he would never ever sleep, fall asleep in her class again. 
Fifth time happened. Jerked him up by the ear, took him right down the hallway there, stuck him in the janitor's closet, and locked the door. Walked away. And then she forgot about him. Forgot that he was in the janitor's closet until the end of the day, and then, well, everyone got to noticing that Tommy was not there any longer. The talk, the talk started going around the school. Where did Tommy go? Did, is he sick? Did he go home? Nobody knew. Next morning, still no Tommy. And the parents, one of the parents showed up here at the school. Where is Tommy? Nobody could find Tommy anywhere. Well, the janitor, going about his usual business, um, needed to do some mopping. Children had tracked in some mud, so he went to the janitor's closet, unlocked it to get his mop and his mop bucket, bucket and discovered little Tommy laying on the floor. No pulse, cold, dead. Evidently, he had been bitten by a brown recluse spider while he was being punished in that janitor's closet. Well, that upset Miss Crabtree a little bit, but she kept a very stern face, and she would not admit that she was the one who had locked Tommy in that janitor's closet. As far as the children knew, she had just made him go back out and sit in the hallway. It just so happened to be that she was catching up on some of her schoolwork after classes let out at the end of the day. And life went on as normal until everyone showed up the next day and discovered Mrs. Thornapple, or Crabtree, <laughs> I forget now, um, was dead in her desk chair, as if she had been working at her desk. As a matter of fact, her pen was held upright, as if she were writing something or writing papers, but she was stone dead and like a statue right in place. Well, they did an autopsy on her and discovered nothing really wrong, but they suspected that perhaps she had heart trouble and she had died of a heart attack somehow. Once they went to Mrs. or Miss Thornapple's home, she was a spinster. She was not married, never had any children. They discovered there were 80 some odd cats that lived in that house. And she had lots of leafy looking herbs and, and uh, some uh, crystallized salts and things and, and little bottles neatly arranged and marked the strange writing that would be on some shelves, as if she were practicing some type of homeopathic medicine. And then as they got to looking at her library, they found books of charms and spells. And the cats, they apparently had not been fed very well. There were remains of dead mice and dead birds practically all over the house. As a recluse, she had been living with all of those cats who were keeping themselves alive by going out and hunting in the neighborhood, bringing their bounty back to the house and leaving the remains in the house, and she would not clean them up. It's also possible that she used some of those animals or parts of those animals in some of her spells or enchantments that she was using as well. So the thinking is going or has been that Tommy, once he lost his life, got his revenge by coming back to her classroom when no one else was there and scared her so badly that she died frozen in place and in time. Thank you very much.